For thousands of years, wars were won and lost by the sword. Swords helped shape history. Today, modern artisans craft historical replicas of these age-old weapons, and they go to the hilt to make sure the details are just right. This reproduction of a medieval sword harkens back to the days of knights in shining armor. The first step to making a sword is to place a piece of high carbon steel in a fixture. Computer guided blades carve out the basic shape of the sword with all the specifications of the original. Centuries ago, a blacksmith would have done this painstaking job by hand, but this machine is much faster and creates a much more consistent cut. After about an hour of carving, a nicely tapered sword blank emerges. The blank is submerged in hot liquid salt, a critical step that softens the steel to eliminate stresses created by the carving. Next, the blade is plunged into cool liquid in a process called quenching. It immediately hardens the edges of the sword, but the center cools more slowly. This allows the sword to retain flexibility, giving the blade a springy quality. Using a belt grinder, sword makers fine tune the blade's shape and hone its edges. The blade is now incredibly sharp. To test its strength, they strike a metal barrel with it. Incredibly, the sword doesn't chip. Next, wax is pumped into molds to make historically accurate copies of the hilt parts. Like the pommel, which is the counterweight at the end of the hilt. And the guard that separates the blade from the handle. These wax copies are used to cast the parts in metal. Then the cast metal pieces are smoothed and polished. They smooth away the rough edges on this sword guard and hone its profile. Grinding the pommel is a challenge because it has so many curves and angles. One mistake and the pommel could end up lopsided, which means it wouldn't be very effective as a counterweight. With the blade and a padded vise, the guard slides onto the tang, where it's cushioned with a piece of plastic and a metal pipe. Then, a sledgehammer pounds it into position. Next, the pommel is hammered into place. And finally, a small piece of steel called a peen block is slipped on. Heat from a torch softens the peen, so it spreads as it's hammered down. Epoxy gets a quick stir, then it's applied to two wooden grips as well as to the handle of the sword. Then the grips are clamped into place. Next, black dye is brushed onto a thin piece of leather. The other side is coated with glue. This glue and dye drenched leather is then wrapped around the wooden handle. It's bound with cord to compress the leather wrap while it dries. Now it's time to brand the blade with the maker's insignia. Chemicals etch the mark into the steel four hundredths of an inch deep. And now you have a replica that's true to the medieval original. A piece of art that takes you back in time at Sword Point.